Welcome to part two of the video build log for the Dynam Turbojet. Today, we'll get this thing out of the box, put the pieces out, and start working on the assembly. Okay, so we've had a chance to look at the instructions and look at the uh, pieces, and we're going to begin on the, um, the fuselage. It's clear that if you're building this stock, that it's really going to go together quickly. Um, I'm, as I've mentioned in the part one of this, is that we are going to do a little bit different. I'm going to put some lights on, and uh, I'm going to put retracts on. So let's take a look at the bottom here and see what we're going to need to do for the, um, for the retracts. Now, what we've got here is this plug that I mentioned before that comes out. And then I'm going to be using these um, Chang Sun retracts that I got from, from Hobby King. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the retract here. Notice that the mounting flange is at the top of where the, the uh, gearing and motor assembly is on, on this retract. And so the goal is then going to be to put it and find a place to fit it in here. So the good news is it looks like it's going to uh, fit uh, within the part that's been cut out and molded, obviously I'm going to be cutting down the, uh, the length of the um, strut itself when I get the, uh, the wings done so I can get all so the airplane sits level. I'm not going to cut that too soon. But the part that fits in uh, between the section where I have uh, removed the, um, the mounting piece for the nose gear, which is kind of screw right in here, uh, I'm going to have to uh, dig that out a little bit. And to do that, uh, I'm going to reach over here and get my uh, rotary tool and I've got um, a flexible extension on it that I um, purchased at uh, Micromark, the small tools people, and I've got just a, uh, an abrasive head on this and so we'll be um, finishing out and just digging this out just a little bit. So let's do that. Okay, so now that we've got that uh, uh, dug out, I'm just going to put this in there and see if it'll fit in there snugly. And it does. Okay, so we've got the, uh, uh, the servo connector. Uh, that's going to need an extension as it works its way to the back. And then these um, come with a, um, a little mounting bar that I'm going to try to use to allow it to continue to steer and retract, and that's going to be mounted on this end. Uh, the, we've got the wire from the servo uh, rudder channel back here in the, um, the fuselage, and so it uh, looks like we're in good shape to get the, uh, the front servo mounted. Use a thumb vise that I have here. We're going to drill the holes into that plastic. I'm going to use the same plastic mount that was in there, and then maybe put a little bit of glue around the front end uh, just to make sure it stays stays tight. So we're in good shape for that. We'll do that final assembly when I have a chance to get a sense of what the length of the um, strut needs to be. I'm going to be using some E-Flight uh, 10 to 15 bolt-on axles. They're for the E-Flight brand, but both E-Flight brand and this brand have three millimeter uh, struts, and so they should fit nicely on there, and uh, so we'll be ready to go with the servo. So we're good there. The next thing I want to do is to uh, work on some lights, and so uh, let's do that next. Now I'm using this Turnigy light kit. It comes in a little uh, plastic bucket that I'm going to make good use of, and um, it has a controller, and uh, I put the lights on it a minute ago to uh, test to make sure they all work. That may be proved not to be such a great idea because these clips really hold tight and so um, you got to be careful when you're taking it apart so you don't damage the wires because they are uh, quite thin. Uh, they come all rolled up in a, in a nice bunch like this. Okay, so in the fuselage there's really only one part of this that, uh, that we're going to be really worried about at this point. One is we may make sure we have a place to mount the controller in the side of the fuselage right in the wing channel is going to be perfect for that. We'll probably put the receiver just on the other side of that. Uh, and then the other is I want to use red strobes and so I've got plenty of line here. So I've got the, uh, the instructions out and it tells me that the um, the, uh, the two reds that are uh, labeled two will flash slowly, and that's what I want for the strobes. And so I'm going to be mounting that on the, on the top. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my thumb vise here, and I'm just going to find the place where I want that, um, that strobe to be, and then I'm going to go through that 
saw that out a little bit. Make note of where it is on the underside. Okay, there it is. Um, very, very careful with the connectors and pop that through. So now we've got the strobe uh, coming out the top. So we're going to be able to use the little uh, mounting piece for that. And then the other one we're going to have coming out the bottom. So we're going to have to go through the wing when we get the wing done. So at this point, I'm basically done with um, what I'm going to do right now in the fuselage. I'm going to have to um, come back and do the final adjustments on the nose gear when I get the um, struts cut. And other, but otherwise, that's all there is that's going to happen in this fuselage. So we're in good shape there. So let's take a look at the wings now. So we've got the wings out, uh, but before we start uh, messing with the wings, let's get the uh, vertical and horizontal stabilizers mounted and and get them glued, um, get them glued together. So remember that in the citation, the uh, the wing has got or the horizontal stabilizer has got some dihedral. So we're just going to mount these in uh, with the control horns down and making sure that the bevels provided in the foam molding uh, have got the wings or the uh, horizontal stabilizers with an up tilt. Now in this case I'm going to use the glue that came with the kit and so let me reach over and um, grab that tube. So we've got the, the glue here and uh, I punctured the lid with the little tip of the cap. And we're going to place a little of it on here. It's pretty runny. I'm going to do both sides up because I um, want to get them pushed in against one another as they as they go in. So a little on the tip. Okay. So again, double checking. Top anhedral control horns down and just gently. Put that in. And I wiggle it around so it gets good coverage because it really is a very nice tight fit on the foam. Looking very nice in there. Go into part two. Maybe here the phone's squeaking as it goes in there. And so it is a very, very nice fit. Moved it back and forth so most of the glue that we had is uh, in the joint and not uh, on, the, on the edge. And so it's looking, looking pretty good. And so we're going to set the tail assembly aside. Uh, it's fitting nice. It's got a nice appearance. Double check the, uh, what appears to be the balance on this. And I think we're in good shape. Okay, so let's take a look at the wings because you know that we're going to have some work that we're going to do. I've done a little work on this first one already, and so I'll, I'll just kind of describe to you uh, what I've done. So if you're going to be dealing with the stock landing gear, you're just going to clip those in right here. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be dealing with retracts. And so uh, we'll take off this little plate, and then we'll hope that the, um, the retracts are going to fit in there. So we just unscrew the plate. We'll get those last little bit of screws out. Make use of that little light kit box so we don't lose them. And then lift this plate out. It comes out very easily, very nicely. And you can see that it's screwed into a, a secondary plate that's been mounted deeply into the foam. So it's got some good strength. And so I really want to be able to use that. So we're going to take another piece of our um, retracts here, one of the main gear retracts, slide that out of its case, and see if that's going to fit. Now, you remember that I mentioned to you that we've already got some of the molding and the pieces already in here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work to pull that landing uh, plug out of there, the strut and the wheel plug. And so I'm just going to go under that with a screwdriver. It's coming up pretty easily. 
This is EPO foam, so it's got some give to it. And it just pops right out. It's got a little bit of glue on the bottom. and You get a nice piece that comes out, and you've got this really nice uh, bay for the, um, the retract. Now, some of this is going to depend upon the brand of retract you get. Again, uh, for me, the mounting flange is on, the retract is on the top, so it's going to go in like this. And so I can see that I've got a little bit of work to do. First, I'm going to have to, uh, in the area where the strut is, um, plug just came out, I'm going to have to enlarge that because of the motor in the retractable gear. And then the, the width of the action down on the bottom is greater than the width of the area here. And so I'm going to have to grind that out. And I'm going to use the same technique that I use with the landing gear on the nose um, to do that. So that's what's ready on the landing gear. Here we've got the flaps. And uh, like I mentioned, we're going to do flaps. So I'm going to again just kind of jab the screwdriver into the cutout and it comes out just very, very easily. It's got a little bit of glue on the bottom uh, and it's looking good. Last but not least, as we look at this, um, because we're going to do the flaps, we need to separate the flaps. Now you can see that there are a couple of tabs and if you can get in, um, when you get yours, you'll be able to see a couple of tabs, but those aren't molded in there. They're just kind of alignment tabs and so don't, you don't need to go cutting through that. And uh, again, the, uh, the flap is just kind of glued in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some pressure on the foam, just work my way back and forth to free up the glue. It's going to come out of that tab. I'm going to hold it there. That one's come free. It's a little thinner here, so I'm going to be more careful. That one's come free. And I'm just going to work back and forth, back and forth um, on this flap to free up the glue that's holding it in place. And it's going to start to come free. Now that end has started to free up. This end is freeing up, and there we go. The flap has come apart, uh, and, and we're ready to work on it. It's got glue that's a little bit thicker than what you might see uh, when a magazine people put the, this is your last issue cover on a magazine, but you can just kind of run your thumb along it uh, and peel it off to get it nice and smooth without having to do any cut. Leave the knife in the box. There's really not any anything that you have to do. And then as you can look along here, you can see that there's this strip of glue. And so I'm going to take a little bit of time. And just like I did with the part that came off on the, um, the flap itself, I'm just going to kind of run my finger along that and try to roll it off the foam and see how much of it I can get to come up at the same time. I'm going at this pretty slow, but as you can see, I'm getting one nice big long strip that came off, and it's just as easy as that to free up the flap. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've done a little work on this wing already, and I'll give you an idea of what I've done, because uh, watching me cut foam and grind is probably not what we want to do today. So, um, again, I've made, uh, used my hobby knife and, and enlarged this area. Again, I used my um, uh, flexible wand and an abrasive um, uh, wheel on my um, rotary tool. And I've just gone in here and pushed back the plastic because I want to use as much of that plastic mounting that as I can because it's got forks that go deep into the foam and I want the strength that that's going to provide us. And so I've dug most of that out. And so now I have my um, retract and, and as I can go in there now I can put that in there and it's going to fit nice and flush nice and flush. It goes in there tight. It's going to fit smoothly. Um, I can use my uh, little um, thumb vise uh, and drill some pilot holes in the plastic and mount the screws that held the other plate in it and just do it exactly the same way. And so that's what I'm planning to do with that. Again, um, I've got some tires and, um, and axles 
that I'm going to bolt on, get a sense of what uh, that's going to be when I put them in the uh, center, them in the cutout for the wheel, uh, get the axles on, make sure that they fit, and then I'll uh, use uh, a cutting disc on my rotary tool to cut off the end of the um, strut. And use our screwdriver and just uh, pull out the plug for the flap. Comes out pretty easily. We've got a space for a small uh, micro servo. And I've got a couple of those that I've got ready to go. And uh, so that's going to be good. And then um, let's take a minute and put the hinges on the, um, the, the flap assembly. So let's reach over and get the plastic parts out and um, work the hinges. Okay, so I've kind of dry fitted the, uh, the, the out inside and the outside uh, flap hinge here. And uh, I'm not putting in the middle right now because we're going to use um, a different hinge there as we uh, uh, mount the, um, the flap uh, underneath it. Okay, uh, and so we've got, um, uh, you know, the, the third one has got a little hole, or they, actually they all do, but they've got a little hole for the uh, flap rod to go in and so I'm going to mount that um, last after I have the servo in and I'm happy with the rest of the alignment but but basically as you can see we're just putting the uh, the, the wire through that it's going to go um, in to that and I got it backwards so that's why I didn't want to do that right away with glue and uh, we'll get that into the um, the track for the, the the flap, uh, the flap is down under there, and then we're going to be mounting that on top of it, which would allow the uh, the flap the flap to move. So uh, that's the plan uh, for that. I'm going to be real careful with the glue for that flap hinge, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little piece of uh, sleeve of uh, like you might use for an antenna extender if you've raced cars or the uh, sleeves that come with uh, control rods where they're mounted outside. Uh, I'm going to cut a little of that and use that here so I don't end up gluing the uh, flap actuator um, to, the, uh, to the foam. So I'm going to set that aside and we'll get these other uh, hinges glued down and uh, get all this drying. Okay, so we've got the glue here. And, uh, now these are not quite the same size. The, uh, so that'll help you figure out which which side goes where. A little on the tab, a little on the plate. See how this glue works. The hole on the hinge is the one that goes on the outside. Now you may want to use different glue. People have different views on glue. Today I'm just using the kit glue because I wanted to, to use it. Uh, I've not used it before. I've used um, CA on this EPO foam. That works. Uh, I've had some specific foam contact like cement that I've used uh, on this kind of foam. And then uh, I've also used white uh, polyurethane foam foam glue, or Gorilla Glue, uh, with uh, good effect as well. And so this kind of experiment today, uh, I'm planning to let this sit for a while. I anticipate it's going to be a bit. Uh, I've got this little strip of hollow tubing uh, that I uh, mentioned that I'm going to cut a little piece of and slide over the flap actuator there so that uh, I don't end up with glue on it. Got the little Z bend on it. A little bit of pressure because of the extra wire with the Z bend. It goes in there very nicely. Put those in there. And then, um, you know, there's a possibility here that I'm going to end up cutting off those little nubs. It's providing a little bit of friction as I. Uh, move that actuator, but I know the actuator's in there clear and that's not going to get glued down. And so at this point, we're just going to let it sit and uh, dry, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time with my uh, rotary tool and dig out the other wing. So uh, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Okay. 